Are you feeling fulfilled and inspired in your life? Are you empowered to go forward and make phenomenal choices in your life and live your life to the full? Or perhaps you're frustrated or maybe disappointed. You're feeling low and you really don't know where to start and how to move forward from the place where you are. I have a question for you. Have you actually met yourself where you are? Welcome to the home of growth. I'm Coach Ted. I am a neurotransformational coach, uh, empowerment advocate, and a founder of Learning Pretzel. Dot com. In this episode, together with my very dear friend, Coach Miriam, we're going to talk about what does it mean and how to meet yourself exactly where you are. Miriam, welcome to the welcome to the show. Why don't you introduce yourself? And say hello to everyone. Thank you, Ted. Hello, everyone. My name is Miriam Baldwin. I'm a caregiver coach, the author of Caregiver 2.0, From Burnout to Powerhouse, and the 21 day program caregive uh 21 days to balance caregiving mm. i'm so excited ted yes welcome i'm so excited for this episode as well and congratulations on your fantastic 21 day Ooh. program oh it took a lot of months to create it but it is built with love <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if you remember, there was an episode when I was flying solo because Miriam was very busy finalizing this program. So whoop, whoop, I yeah. celebrate that with you. And without Thank further you. ado, I want to jump into this episode because so many people, we've been talking to so many people about that, right? That, yeah. you know, how does it actually look? Meet yourself where you are because it's a concept, right? Like when you hear yes. that, it's a conceptual kind of like a question. And I don't know how about you, but the first time I heard this question, now, have you met yourself where you are? I loved the sentiment in it mm -hmm. because I knew deep down that I was in some way disaligned with myself and my life wasn't really wholesome. I knew there was something wrong. I couldn't put a finger on it, but I knew there was something wrong, but I didn't really know how to do that. How was it for you, Miriam? Did you know like how to meet yourself? What does it actually mean even? I didn't even know how to recognize it. I, you know, that I always thought that I had to start from a certain point. But where was, where's that point? Where that do you point, start? Right? What, what's <laughs> that point? And <laughs> it was so, you know, I I I didn't know that. And mm. I was, you know, I was comparing myself, my 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 life to other people's lives. Yeah, and, and that is a huge thing. Guilty. I'm guilty of that myself right? Two hands up, right? And here's the thing, because this is this is something that I love talking to people about. Comparing in itself is a very helpful and useful function and a skill, because it we achieve so much in life through our ability to compare. It's just that when it comes to comparing ourselves to other people, it's not even that. It's what we do with the result of the comparison that is harmful for me like i remember that i've used comparison to reaffirm my limiting beliefs mm -hmm. whenever i was able to see somebody who was excelling at things that i saw myself not being great at i used this comparison to reassure myself that you see you're a complete loser you're completely worthless you're completely this a b c d e f g the entire alphabet of all sorts of limiting beliefs because i was looking for a confirmation for that of course back then i didn't know that that's what i was yeah. doing today i do and yeah. I was creating a lot of sabotaging, you know, behaviors and patterns and stuff like that. And I want to ask you, because you said that you're comparing yourself a lot, right? Now, yeah. when you when you when you connect to that time when you were really in that place of that disalignment and not really knowing what was going on, what other things were happening for you? Like were you, for example, like were you happy? Well. You know, I had an idea of happiness, of doing fun things. I mean, like I was 29 when I met my boyfriend then. Yeah. And my idea was doing fun stuff. Yeah. Doing fun and things. Was, and let me ask you, what was the definition of fun 
you had at the time? Oh, that at that at that age, I wanted to go to the club, travel the world, go out for dinner as much as we could, you know, hang out in the club, uh, visiting friends. Mm. That was my idea of of or definition of fun. And what happened then? Then something happened to my boyfriend and it made me feel unhappy mm. because I had a definition of fun, what fun should look like. And for me, fun was traveling the world, hanging out in the club, uh, sipping on cocktails, you know, that was, I was holding. To the definition. On the, yeah. Yeah. And that made me feel unhappy. And it hurts, doesn't it? Because that's the whole part of it, right? Like we're holding on to those predetermined ideas of what our life should look like, of what does it mean to have fun, of what does it mean to be happy. And we have all of those ideas. And when we hold on to them, we don't realize that in the moment that when we hold on so rigidly to those ideas and definitions, we actually limit our experience inside of that. So let me ask you a question because many people probably know your story. For those of you who don't, please go back to our episodes and definitely get Caregiver 2.0, a phenomenal book by Miriam. I highly, highly advise from a burnout to powerhouse where she shares so generously her story and also gives tips how to, you know, care for yourself and how to care for others and how to look after yourself inside of this, this beautiful mission. But my question for you then is, where you were in your life, facing the difficulty of the situation you have faced with Martin, facing the situation with your mom, facing the situations with your brother, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about the definition of fun, was there no fun moments in those times at all then? Uh, Not many. There were not many fun moments that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Sure. Because I kept holding on to the definition. I, the idea I had of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And it was I, hard. Mm, of course. It, it was hard. Mm. So... How- when we think about moving forward and meeting ourselves inside of those moments, right? Because there's no point, I love the fact that you're bringing it so honestly, right? You're just being open and honest about how it was, right? And it also shows us the light in here that inside of wherever space you are in your life, whatever experiences you are in your life, you have needs that are unmet. Because whether it's an actual need that you are lacking safety or you are lacking an emotional support or physical support or psychological support, or whether you are lacking something because you have an expectation of it, that doesn't really matter, does it? Because it feels the same way. Yeah. It feels the same way, right? Yeah. But whether we just have expectations we're holding on to or whether we're actually physically feeling like we're lacking some form of, you know, experiences, support and nourishment, it really doesn't help. So I want to ask you, because this is so, this is so huge. When we want to meet ourselves, right? Like we do really need to recognize our needs. How did you go about that? Like, how did it happen? Like, what did you have to encounter something before you realized that there were needs in your life that you weren't attending to? I'm, I'm so happy you're asking this because that I need, I needed to acknowledge that Miriam had needs. Mm. That Miriam needed time for herself, for instance. Mm-hmm. That Miriam, you know, I, everyone has needs, right? Yeah. 
but I needed to acknowledge it and say it out loud. Absolutely. Like Miriam has needs that. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know Miriam's story, just to put it into a context, Miriam became a caregiver to her husband, and she has been his caregiver ever since, and she also took care of other people. And acknowledging needs inside of that, where mm. we are in service, and I think that this is particularly challenging for caregivers because it's hard enough to acknowledge things for ourselves when we yeah. are not in that environment. But where are you a caregiver? And caregiving can have many different forms and many different outfits, right? You could be caregiving partner like yourself you could be also a mother because it is a form of caregiving for children you could be i don't know maybe you're a leader who needs to take care of so many different people you're a manager who takes care of your teams now those forms and costumes and responsibilities will look very different than duties but at the end of the day inside of all of that is you who also needs to look after yourself Absolutely. And when we talk about meeting yourself where you are, is to really look inwards rather than outwards. It's not to compare yourself. It's not to look for what other tools you need to get in your life. It's just looking inwards, right, Miriam, and checking with yourself where yeah. you are. Like, where are you? Are you fulfilling your needs? Are you hurting? Do you need support? Do you feel lonely? Only when you meet yourself where you are, where you connect to how you feel, what you think, what, what uh, are you meeting your needs? Yeah. You're going to yeah. be able to create a movement forward because only you said that earlier, right? You didn't know where you were. So only when we get there, we can start creating a plan and forward momentum. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that for me, it was also, um, how do you say this? It's, it, it was also important to give myself permission mm. to so. acknowledge, to say it out loud, and to allow myself to start where I was in my journey. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't only have an ideas about what our life should look like, but we also have ideas about how our journey should look like, right? Like we have all of those ideas of, oh yeah, a, a road to success, a road to career, a road to marriage, a road to happy life, a road to this, a road to that is going to look in a certain way. And the funny thing is that it very, it very rarely actually looks the way you, we imagine that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I love the fact that you're bringing this up because when we have that idea, right, then what we initially focus on is the discrepancy between. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible, right? Because if you if you have a definition, pre-decided -de -pre definition of fun life looks like A, B, C, D, right? And this and that looks like A, B, C, D. When we have all of those pointers, we actually condition ourselves and limit ourselves that until we achieve those, we're not giving ourselves that permission to consider even, not even feel, consider that we could be having a good life. And that lack mindset is so focused on the discrepancy between the ideal and where we actually are, that I think that because so many of us interpret that as our fault, that yeah. we are failures, that we don't make that happen. Therefore, we are the failures. We are the fault. And that's why so many people actually end up resisting looking inside of themselves where they can meet themselves. Yeah. And, you know, one, one thing, um, uh, one of my mistakes then was um, I wanted to reach my goals too fast. Mm. and I had to learn how to set realistic goals that 
That is so huge because so many people, so many of us are in absolute denial of where we really are. And we just set our goals with our ambition, which is good, right? Because being ambitious is really good. Oh, yeah. But when we set our goals and when we have those expectations of certain outcomes, it's so easy to get lost in attachment of who we are and what does this achievement say about us. And that can really hurt us in the oh. aftermath. Oh, yes. Because there is a part of us that is healthily attached to the commitment, to the investment we are making in something, to the dedication to something. But there's a very fine line in between that attachment crosses the border to the outcomes, which means to that happening, which very often, as you probably know yourself, is completely dependent on a lot of people and circumstances. It is. So you can't really say that. And I remember that was that was my experience inside of so many situations, especially mm -hmm. in my professional life. I attached so much of my self-worth to the outcomes of everything that I was doing that everything became a life of death type of a business. And I was so incredibly, so incredibly consumed by that whole idea that I then started refusing and resisting looking inside because I've developed a very unhealthy relationship with myself. Uh. And guys, if that relates to you, if you can relate to that, drop a comment, let us know whether you're watching this yeah. or listening to it. We'd love to hear from you. This is, as always, a dialogue, not a monologue. So we love keeping you, keeping, keeping in touch with you, and you help us create this content as relatable as possible to all of you. And I know that for some of you, some of you might get inspired and might kind of like go, oh, actually, to you know what? I'd like some help. So you might reach out to me or to Miriam and ask for some help. For some of you, this inspiration might just open a gate to a whole new level of awareness, right, about yourself. And you might want to start working on it or you might have some tools, right, that suddenly it just clicks and it makes sense so you can start creating some motion. Miriam, when you think about meeting yourself in your, like, in your life, what do you think is the most important thing that every one of our listeners and our viewers should take away from this video? Well, it's very important for you who is watching, who's listening. Start where you start today. Just start where you are. There is no beginning point. There is no middle point. Start where you are today because the minute you start you will discover that you will start growing you will start learning and growing i love that i absolutely love that and just to wrap this episode up and thank you so much for for this conversation it was fruitful and and, and beautiful as always and i'm already looking forward to our next one the one thing that I would say to people is this. I know that when we make plans, we want to see steps from one to a hundred. But just remember one thing. You can change so much taking the first step. The, the second and the third and the fourth will become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And when you hold on, like we were talking with Miriam's example to the definition and idea, right? The idea of how things should look like that can actually compromise your journey. Because if you imagine how this whole path should look like where you are right now, and especially if you are not in touch with yourself, <laughs> right? If you haven't met yourself, you're speaking about an intellectual idea, then that journey is going to be so completely off that you will only harm yourself. Mm. We will be bringing more different aspects of personal development and personal growth journey into this, into this series, the home of growth. 
And we also have some news to announce that from this episode onwards, we will be publishing ourselves every two weeks because we have got engaged in other programs as well. And we love to make sure that we hear from you. We have time to read all of those comments and then respond with our content towards them. So from this point onwards, we will be publishing every two weeks. You can sign up to our podcast. You can sign up to our channels. You can reach out to us. All of the information is available in the description below. Hello. And as always, we thank you for your time. We thank you for your attention. We cheer for you. We love you. And we look forward to speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.